morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Java with John program. This is Friday, May 22nd, and you're listening on 94.9 WAEM and on our YouTube channel uh, hosted by Acting TV. Thank you for uh, listening and watching. We have another great program today. Uh, Java with John is a program that, as you know, we used to hold at the Senior Center in person. And over the last few months, we've been doing it virtually, and it's been a great way to uh, have a conversation every week and try to keep people informed. I have uh, with, with us this morning, we have Sharon Mercurio, the, the Director of the Senior Center in Council on Aging, Heather York, the Director of Acting Nursing Services, and our, and our special guest today is Greet from the United Way. And uh, we're going to have a great time and ask her some questions about what's going on at the United Way and some of the great things that they're doing over there to help our community, our communities. So uh, every program, I usually start off with just a few updates on what's happening uh, in town. Uh, we've had a very busy week as we continue to work to respond to this pandemic. Uh, something that people have been asking about is town meeting. The Board of Selectmen voted earlier this week to, to have, a special, have a town meeting on June 29th. This was the annual town meeting that was supposed to happen on April 6th, and we've postponed it, and now the date is set for June 29th. Uh, we're we're going to finalize the start time, but it will be a little bit earlier than usual. And we're going to do everything we can to get the meeting completed in one night. Uh, that will include reducing some of the articles um, and reducing some presentations. And, and we're also going to work very hard to make it a safe environment for people to be able to attend. We're going to change the primary venue of the meeting. It's normally held in the auditorium. And for this uh, event, we're going to hold it in the gymnasium, the upper gymnasium at the high school, which has a, a you know over a thousand person seating capacity. And we're going to really be able to spread people out. And um, we're going to take several other me measures to make it a safe place for people to uh, participate in our government. We're not going to use the clickers this year. The clickers are just something else that we'd have to try to clean. So we're going to take those off the table. And we're not going to we're going to try not to hand out any papers. And uh, we're going to try to do everything we can. Uh, to make uh, hand sanitizing and masks available to people uh, to make sure that we're doing everything safely. Other things, uh, the governor, as you all know, announced the reopening plan for Massachusetts, uh, and it's a four-phase plan, and he announced that we are currently in phase one, uh, and you, we saw some businesses and industries uh, being allowed to reopen with uh, restrictions in place, and more are planned for the coming weeks. Uh, the four-phase four plan, they indicated at the state level that each phase will be approximately three weeks, but they're going to make the decision based on public health metrics. So we're going to continue to watch that and monitor it very closely. Here in Acton, we've taken similar measures to start looking at how we're going to reopen, and we're following a very similar track to the state's plan. And I encourage you to continue to follow our website and uh, uh, other opportunities to learn more about how we're doing this. So uh, why don't we start with an update on public health from Heather York, our public uh, health nurse. Heather, how are you doing today? You ready for, ready for Memorial Day weekend? Morning, John. Yes, I'm ready for Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> it looks like the weather will be beautiful, so hopefully people will get outside um, and do things in there own you know property and maybe get out to the rail trail so that'll be great for people um, so uh, public health wise um, we are up to 158 uh, positive cumulative cases um, within Acton with over 70 people having recovered um, that's updated on a daily basis um, on the town website so you can keep up with those numbers um, as John said, as we're, you know, opening up uh, and getting into phase one, the guidance, of course, is still, um, you know, to cover your face in any place that you cannot socially distance, you know, keep washing your hands, keep washing um, high touch areas um, in your home, especially if you're having people come within the house that don't live there. Um, and then socially, uh, the gathering. So still um, less than 10 can be gathered. And the recommendation right now is that it's only people within your own family, um, which is a good tool to follow. So the nursing department um, is still doing our tracing of um, surveillance for positive cases. Um, but we're also looking at our reopening plan based on the guidance from the governor 
um, as a public health department and our public health services, such as our podiatry clinics and, and blood pressure monitoring and our immunization program, <clears throat> excuse me, we should be able to um, be opening somewhere between phase two and phase three. It'll really uh, be determined on where we fall. Um, phase two on the health services, they are starting um, and they're looking at as long as everything is moving forward um, that um, any routine um, medical procedures that need to be done and some of the, the suggestions or some of the, the examples they put are the less urgent preventative services such as routine dental cleaning, um, certain elective procedures. So for folks that have had elective, um, let's say, joint replacements canceled over this period because they were um, trying to keep um, the protective equipment for the frontline workers, those should start opening up as we move into the summer. Um, and then day programs such as adult health and um, day health uh, rehabilitation through the Department of um, Developmental Services, those things will start, you know, moving forward through phase two and phase three, which is good news. Um, so keep an eye on that, especially uh, for folks that have put off those routine procedures such as, you know, dental cleanings or going to a dermatologist for a routine skin check. Those things will start happening again, um, which is good news. So I hope everyone has a great weekend and enjoys the sun. Yes, uh, thank you for the updates and thanks again for joining us uh, as you do every week. Our, our next speaker will be Sharon Mercurio from the Council on Aging. Sharon, what's going on uh, at the Senior Center or with the Council on Aging these days? Hi, John. Uh, so even though the Senior Center building is remains closed to the public, the Council on Aging is uh, Staff are really working hard behind the scenes to try to keep seniors connected, keep them up to date on what's going on in town. Um, hence this program, really grateful that um, you've agreed to do this and that we're doing it every week just to keep people informed. Um, we're trying new things all the time, um, stepping out of our comfort zone and we're asking the seniors to step out of their comfort zone a little bit too. Um, I remember my introduction to Zoom the police chief is texting me and telling me, Sharon, you're sideways, you need to do this. Um, and, and it's new to all of us and a little scary, but um, it's great to see people's faces. So coming in June, we're going to start introducing a few more programs via Zoom. But again, we're very heavily reliant on Acton TV as well for the folks that aren't comfortable with technology. Um, Acton TV has been wonderful. We've got all kinds of exercise and line dancing, yoga, lectures um, happening on Acton TV and, and Mark and I were speaking before the show we'd really like to start amping up again um, when the, the studios open just to try to keep people connected um, and again I, I am I'm asking folks to to try it Zoom has been great um, we're, we're on it quite often um, we do have a high school student now that his AP exams are over who's going to be working on filming a how-to to show on Acton TV to kind of go step by step because um, it isn't that that bad. Um, like Heather said, it, weather's beautiful. I know we're all isolating and quarantining, but sunshine and fresh air really makes a difference. You know, get outside. It's safe to be outside. You don't want to be with other people right now, um, but just to get some sun and fresh air can really change um, your outlook, um, help your, your mental health, which is just as important these days. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, I kind of want to do a, a program, Senior Supporting Seniors. Um, AB High School Seniors really um, had such a loss this year, as all, as all seniors have, both high school and, and college seniors. But um, this coming week was going to be their senior week. So, you know, put out some signs. You're home, make a sign, blow some balloons up, you know, for the, the class of 2020, um, show them that the community cares and supports them. You know, and if our seniors can do that, I think that would be just a nice touch. 
um, they will be doing a, a rolling rally for the seniors next Friday night. So from 445 to 7 o'clock, the seniors will be driving around town. I believe they're getting the diplomas um, as well. So get out, give a wave, have a sign ready, show them that, that we're there for them during this difficult time as well. Thank you. It's, it's funny that you're talking about seniors because um, that's your profession, but you're actually talking about high school seniors. Um, but that's uh, thank you for that information. And it's, it's also funny that you mentioned being out of your comfort zone. Uh, I don't think anybody has seen their comfort zone since early March, um, unfortunately. So I think we're all facing that uh, right now. Uh, so thank you for your continued work on behalf of the community. And, and thank you for, again for your remarks. So I think our, our next guest, uh, we have a special guest, Greet, uh, from the AB United Way. Greet, uh, how would I pronounce your last name? In English, you say the hand shooter. In, the hand shooter. I'm originally from Belgium, and I'm from the Dutch-speaking northern part, and then you say the hand shooter. And what it really means is a the hand bow shooter, but the bow was too long, so that draws dropped. So it's the hand shooter. Okay, well, I, I hope I can call you Greet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, tell he, us, what, uh, what's going on at AB United Way? Thank you for having me, John. It's really great. It's also great to know that seniors are, are listening. They are great supporters of Active Box Bro United Way, and we care about them. Um, I joined Active Box Bro United Way about a year uh, ago in August, and I was thrilled that the board gave me the mandate to think big and bold. And we immediately really got great community support for that by having um, a hundred thousand dollar capacity building grant from the Steinberg Lali Foundation, which allowed us to grow from one a person staff, basically, or one full time equivalent, to three. Um, and that kind of just came all in time for COVID-19. Um, in one year, we basically grew our revenue, thanks to the community, from $220,000 to $540,000. Uh, and as you know, uh, Act and Boxbow United Way fights for the health and education and financial stability of every person in our community. And uh, next year will be our 40th anniversary. Uh, but this year we are facing a giant challenge before that 40th anniversary. It was not exactly the year that one would imagine when one started. Uh, in thinking out of the box, everyone has to do so. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's been a pleasure working with you. I know I met with you right when you started uh, last year in August, and it's great to see uh, the impact you've had in, in your short time here. Um, so I think one, one big announcement that I want you to talk more about, and we've been trying to do our best to keep the community informed, is the impact fund. Uh, yeah. Right early on in this process, uh, ABA United Way launched a, an impact fund to try to help our residents. Can you tell us more about, um, about that program? Yes. So um, in on March 24th, we kind of realized, I think, early on that this crisis was obviously going to be very big and impacting a lot of people. And United Ways all around the country really launched um, uh, uh, funds. And we decided, uh, even when we are really the smallest United Way in Massachusetts, that we are nevertheless big and that we could do this. And so we created uh, this online uh, fundraising campaign and invited people to join. And the response from the community was massive in less than two months. We raised $175,000, uh, mostly from um, community members, from families, individuals, uh, some family foundations, and then some corporations, Qualcomm, uh, who is in Boxborough, gave uh, $20,000 to the fund. We had $75,000 given by local families, basically, to be matching funds. So it was just really enormous generosity and uh, kind of generosity inspired generosity. And now the goal is to share these funds with residents in need, uh, because we realize that there is a lot of need, and especially on um, those members in the community who have a low income. So if you uh, need a grant, you can receive uh, funding for up to $1,000 by contacting your social worker or contacting the Council on Aging 
or and citizenship is not an not an issue or a question uh, or you can even contact your faith community but we are trying to basically bring people to the town social workers because they do a fabulous job of helping people to access all resources and there are actually quite a lot of resources available great yeah that's a terrific program and uh, we really appreciate you uh working with us our, if you're in acton uh laura ducharme uh has been doing a lot of work to help uh receive applications and work with United Way on the process. And if your Foxborough uh, works with Lauren, uh, so it's either Laura or Lauren. Okay. Um, so that's great. Thank you very much. And uh, maybe I know that this, this has taken over a lot of what your focus is just like everyone else, but is there any, any big, big ideas that you have had been working on or are you still maybe working on that you want to talk to us about uh, over it? Um, basically, uh, uh, so we give grants is one thing, but then um, really uh, trying to build a strong community support network requires working extremely closely and um, trying to assess the needs in the community. I would say during COVID-19, it's a program on steroids because the needs uh, shifted very, very dramatically. And the model of delivering, if you're a food pantry, you're used to having people come in pick out groceries and now we had to all of a sudden turn to outwards and um, give people food in the driveway and how do you how do you do this so complete reorganization and what we did uh, early on and what we do uh, generally non in non-covid times is trying to understand what the community needs but now we needed to do all this much faster so we did a survey and keep that updated that survey so that every agency every nonprofit and there are about i would say 30 nonprofits that provide services to some age group in our two towns of acton and boxborough we share with all these nonprofits what each of the nonprofits is doing and i think the more the most beautiful story that came out of collaboration is the food security task force so every week um, a whole host of and public agencies and then the town social workers and private uh, uh, groups who provide food mount calvary supper acton food pantry maynard uh, they all come together and uh, mount calvary got a call from the greater foston boston food bank saying um, there is the Groton school is closing their uh, kitchen and they have frozen food available because we had done a survey of asking where could there be resources available for refrigerator and fridges we found out that acton congregational had refrigerator space available because they weren't using their kitchen so the mount calvary was able to get within one day to get to the Groton school and basically bring frozen food that will now serve about 130 people for four or five weeks uh, uh, and wow. it's by thinking proactively and here we have a faith community working together with mount calvary supper that that has a lot of volunteers from all over the community with a school and the boston food bank and it all just has been working i would say that coordination and sharing and learning from each other um, is very important um, if diapers are needed uh, it used to be basically First Connection, uh, who helps moms with postpartum depression, depression. But right now, you say if you actually give the diapers to the food pantry, then people also will be perhaps less reluctant to go and also get some food. Because if you need diapers, you might need food as well. So how do we help support um, each other? Uh, and how do we reach people who usually never needed help before? And then a whole other host area, uh, a whole other area where we have worked hard uh, and continue to focus on Acton and Boxborough, I think are resilient community, but mental health and suicide has been an issue. And in, in, we want, we have uh, AB Cares Coalition and we want to continue to really care about the mental health. And we see that there is an, incredible increase in need at this moment from loneliness grief and among the young and the elderly uh, uh, and so how we are trying to uh, provide programs and also figure out where what's our role 
and our, we see our role as a coordinator and a connector. Uh, and so that's uh, another good area. So we are going to have a program from youth stress, anxiety, and depression in June um, uh, with uh, yeah, experts and people can uh, ask questions. Um, we will have the first QPR training with the AB Cares Coalition, um, our, our suicide prevention training also in June, virtually, uh, but we want all these things need careful rethinking before you do them online. Yes, you know, it's, uh, it's everything, we're doing everything online now. So it's really, uh, it's really been interesting. And, yeah. and for some people, it's been very difficult, but hopefully every, every week we're getting better at it and, and more uh, better at using these tools. So, well, thank you. That's a, that's a great uh, overview of all the great work that you're doing. And thank you for, for all of that. Um, so in, at the Job with John program, we usually then take questions from the public. Um, I've seen a few that are, have been rolling in uh, since we started the program. So I'm going to transition to that part of the program now. Uh, this is the May 22nd Java with John on 94.9 WAEM and on YouTube TV on Acton TV's channel. And our first question is from a emailer and it is, oh, here's a good one. When will the tennis courts be open? Um, well, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious about that as well. In the guidance of uh, the state's reopening plans, uh, tennis wasn't included in phase one, uh, and we think it's part of phase two, uh, but our local board of health is looking very closely at that issue as, as well as issues re regarding all the other recreational um, amenities and, and pursuits that go on here in Acton. And I would encourage you to keep an eye on, on their um, any local orders that they may be coming out with in the, in the coming weeks. So thank you for that question. Another question is, when will the library be open? Well, um, the library uh, has been closed uh, since March and uh, they've been doing a lot of work and doing some really great things uh, online and engaging with the community in new ways, which, is, which has been fun. They actually started a radio show. Uh, hopefully you can check that out. I think it's on, on Saturdays. Uh, one thing they're gonna try to start doing in early June though is curbside. Um, services. We're still finalizing the details on how that will, how that we rolled out, but uh, we're going to try to we try to put put a system in place that allow people to access library resources um, curbside. So stay tuned for that, and we'll be making some announcements in in the next week or two on, on exactly what that will look like. Another question is: Is Acton considering a, to change the ban on drive up windows? That's a good question. So in Acton and, and in some other communities in the Commonwealth, there, there's a zoning provision that doesn't allow drive up windows at, at McDonald's or, or anywhere. Um, and there's been some discussion about whether that's something we should reconsider as a community. The Board of Selectmen did talk about it a few weeks ago and asked the planning board to take a look at the zoning as it relates to drive up windows and to try to work on something for next town meeting. Uh, not the one that we just scheduled, but the one a year from now. Uh, so that that is being considered, but um, I don't believe it will be considered um, anytime soon. Um, here's a question uh, about United Way. Um, what what's going on with the program? The the on the bright side. Uh, what what is that? Is that some kind of competition for Java with John? No, we would not dare to. It actually, we will love to invite you, John, to participate. Uh, but the idea was that here we were in a time where we were all kind of struggling. And how can we highlight what we see? Um, um, and with we, I mean, the really more than 90 volunteers that we have that are working in, in a ton of different ways with the community, a lot of incredible collaboration and positive um, positive things every day and we see extraordinary acts of kindness in by famous and non-famous people and so we wanted to have a program to highlight that and the beauty of it is that we I have a, a student board members and non-student board members four students from the Acton High School are basically um, really our production team and are interviewing and we asked because we knew that the Discovery Museum was closed and again we want to encourage cross-collaboration so we 
we invited Neil, the CEO, to be the host, and he's interviewing one of the um, uh, Oscar from Oscar Burritos to somebody who's doing something beautiful, um, giving uh, 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 can be uh, yeah doing a, a freelance project or or a volunteer project at the high school. Uh, or it can be domestic violence network. We are trying to just see what what great things are people doing. Then very short blurbs, three minutes. Yeah, that's I I, I watched one of them. It's really a great program, and uh, I, I look forward to seeing when when is it on next. Um, it be uh, uh, it is normally posted on Fridays, um, uh, and we have uh, one or two guests uh, that uh, we will run it through June and then probably we're going to give the students a break. Uh, we also hope that Acton TV is posting it because we did, do think it's great for the seniors too to watch and, and to because it's just basically little blurbs on what the community is doing. Um, we'll, uh, we'll send a link out to that on the bright side. We'll make sure that we cross post yeah. that. That is a great and program. And, and it's on uh, Facebook, on Instagram and then uh, Acton TV was going to host it uh, and then on YouTube from Acton TV too. Thank you. Well, that's great. We'll definitely uh, try to help promote that because it's a great idea. Uh, here's a question about Memorial Day. Unfortunately, uh, we're not able to hold a Memorial Day ceremony like we, we would normally do. And this person is asking what we are going to do. Uh, and actually, I'm, I'm pleased to announce that James McRae and Gail Sawyer and other volunteers have put together a great program. Uh, they were actually out on the common yesterday doing some um, recording of a partial ceremony. And they're going to compile that with the help of Mark Ducey at Acton TV. And they'll be running a uh, Memorial Day program on, on Memorial Day itself. And it may be uh, shown other times throughout the weekend. So stay tuned for that on Acton TV. And it'll, it'll also be posted on, on the YouTube channel. So although we can't be together, uh, hopefully we can spend time and reflect on, on that important day with the great work of, of James and others uh, with the video that they put together. Uh, do we have any other questions? Let's see. I think we're, um, I think we've covered all of them. Oh, here's one. Uh, town meeting was announced that it will be in the gymnasium. Why aren't we holding it outside? Uh, that's a good question. I know that some other communities across the state are looking at holding an outdoor town meeting. It is something that we looked at and we tried to identify some ways that we may be able to do it. Uh, we feel that the the plan that we have in place is going to provide a, a safe environment and it will allow us to do uh, handle and make sure it's an accessible space and a safe space and uh, we're going to make sure that people are spread out far enough um, so the decision was made to recommend indoors and um, we think it'll go well and we're going to we're going to work very hard over the next few weeks to make sure that it does go well as, as a note there is a, an election actually coming up on june 2nd uh, which hopefully uh, you have already sent in your application for a, a mail-in ballot and you're voting by mail. That is a recommended way to handle this rather than to go to the polling place. But if you decide, if you do decide to go, it's at, it's at the junior high. And I will also be taking several uh, precautionary measures that day to make sure that people uh, have adequate distance between each other. We're encouraging people to bring their own pens uh, rather than use the one at, in the booth. Um, Masks will be required in accordance with state guidelines. And uh, we're going to just continue to do all these things to make sure we keep people safe. Oh, here's a question from one of our guests. <laughs> uh, do you want to ask it? Uh, I wanted to actually, I forgot to say that we have our first annual virtual meeting uh, or virtual annual meeting on June 9th. But I don't think I asked a question, did I? Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about. So, what is what is your annual meeting? What do you mean? So every year, Acton Boxborough has an annual meeting and is pretty well attended. And basically, it's an overview and a celebration of community. And um, uh, we invite everyone to zoom in that evening. And it should be with videos, kind of looking back and looking forward, and thanking people and kind of giving an, an overview of all these groups and all the nonprofits that uh, really are trying to make this a great place for everyone to live. How can people um, attend? Uh, through a Zoom uh, link. So we will put it on our website. We can send you also uh, for the newsletter uh, a link. Um, and uh, yeah, it, 
will be very just then clicking in. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, that that sounds great. Uh, that's it. That'll be interesting. It's probably be more fun to do it in person, but I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun on Zoom. Um, oh, here's a question for Sharon. When's the senior center going to open? Kind of a loaded question. Thanks, John. Um, I really honestly don't anticipate us opening anytime during the summer. Um, again, we will be there. We'll be there to support you um, to do kind of these different types of programs than what we're used to and um, just looking for continued guidance from local government and officials, um, Mass Council on Aging, just really to keep people safe and move extremely slowly as we do move forward. Okay, well, um, that, that uh, brings us to the end of the program here. And every week we've been fortunate to have uh, Sharon read a poem. I wonder if she's prepared to do that today. Okay, let's hear it. All right. A um, little bit different because we're on the heels of Memorial Day. I, I chose a poem to, um, entitled Those Honored Dead. And this is by Marion G. Mahoney. Why do you fly the flag today? My grandson wants to know. I fly it for the graveyards where the countless grasses grow. I fly the flag for children whose fathers are a name, a half-remembered memory of a face within a frame. I fly it for the families of sons and daughters lost. They know the price of liberty, how terrible the cost. I fought, fly the flag for veterans who lost their youth and blood and saw the comrades slaughtered and the carnage and the mud. I fly it for the ones who marched in cadence off to war to close their eyes forever upon some foreign shore. I fly the flag for grief poured out upon a granite wall, the laying on of hands that heals the scars within us all. I fly it for the sound of taps, that melancholy tune that lays to rest those honored dead who always died too soon. Thank you, Sharon. A great job as always. Um, really a beautiful uh, sentiment, especially this weekend. Uh, you, uh, I hope that you're keeping track of all these poems as, as a curated collection uh, that you can post somewhere because you certainly have been picking some really, really good ones. Um, so thank you for doing that. Uh, I want to thank I want to thank all of our guests, uh, Sharon, Heather, Greet. Uh, I want to thank our team uh, behind the scenes: Mark, Mark at Acting TV, Mark in Town Hall, uh, Austin, and uh, Brian. Uh, Cody, who's helping us out today. So thank you all. Uh, I hope you all have a, a great uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, thank you for listening and, and please be safe.